my goodness, in the meantime, the Ooh, Pedro cannot play the game. What is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sanders channel. My name is Shanks, and today we are going to cast a replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06 on the beautiful map Westfold between Isengard versus Gondor. El Clasico situation good against evil, my most favorite matchup in the entire game. I like this matchup the most, I think. Uh, just because it reminds me to the films. I mean, basically in the films, it was Rohan against Isengard, but I feel like in this game, Gondor against Isengard is like this one matchup, you know what I'm saying? That's the one golden matchup I used to like to play a lot back in the day when the game was way more active. So as for the opening, we have a blacksmith and farm opening, which is not the best opening in the universe. I personally would only open with a blacksmith on a map like this, because on a map like this, you have plenty of outside settlements, as you can see, right? You can actually uh, send the hobbit to the bottom side, send one soldier to the top side, and then you can get this one also for free. So basically every single player on a map like this will have four free unprotected settlements to capture. And if you have to make a choice between the farms inside and outside of your castle, always choose the farms outside because they are starting with level 2, which means more resources. Level 2 gives you more, level 3 even more. So Elvinwood is going to be pleased. Um, it's a 1v1 situation, but I believe Isengard play will be able to get more units on the field very soon. He's trying to defend this. And with the second Uruk, he can surely do that. Uruks are just too tanky. Even on the land, which is a clear advantage for the Gondor soldiers, Uruks can stand and fight for a long duration. Now it's gonna be a 2v1 situation, but the good thing for this situation, I mean, <laughs> I just had the situation too many times, I know, sorry for that. The good thing about this for the Gondor player is that he was able to kill all the workers. So yeah, basically he couldn't destroy the Lumber Mill, but I think it's okay because the Lumber Mill without workers cannot produce any resources. So it's actually not too shabby for the, for the Gondor player. However, again, with only two soldiers, it's very hard, you know, <laughs> it's very hard for the Gondor faction player to deal a lot of damage and he will eventually lose map control and that's why i personally would open with a barracks which eventually gonna slow you down and delay your stable a little bit but i think it's a worth trade because it gives you much more early game presence you understand without the barracks without having additional swordmen at the beginning of the game you cannot compete the map control against any faction because mordor will have orc pit for free orcs rohan will have the extra peasants from the farms and isengard obviously will have the uruk pit opening for extra Urukai, which are also stronger than your soldiers. So, long story short, the map is gonna look red very soon. And by the time your Gondor Knights are on the field, you gotta make a choice. Because on a map like Westfold, with plenty of possibilities, we have too many creeps on the map. You need to make a choice if you wanna creep or if you wanna pressure. Because the Uruk pit is gonna get level 2 now. And the first pikeman is gonna be on the field right after your first Gondor Knight joins the battlefield. And I think you need to kind of defend your own settlements first. But he can ignore this. No, he's not going to ignore this. He want to get free experience. Experience is very important in this matchup for the Gondor player. Why? Because in order to get the chance to ever rush the Isengard castle, you will need to uh, summon the Elven Alliance from your spellbook. That means you will need three power points. In most cases, what players are doing, you know, in many situations, they will skip the heal power point from the spellbook and get to the 3 power point power spike as soon as possible. So they skip heal and they collect 3 power points in total to unlock the Alvin Alliance. Very important. So we might also see the same situation here for the Gondor player. But as you can see, the map control is not looking very good, <laughs> you know. It's not looking very good for the uh, for the Gondor player at all. And look at the base from the Isengard player. He has like a full base, you know, Uruk pit level almost 3. I like the Uruk, pl Uruk pit placement too. Very smart move, you want to place it always in the back of your fortress. Because if you place it here in the front, it might be a better choice at the beginning of the game. But later on, it's very, very, very easy for the Gondor player to rush it down. And once you lose your Uruk pit, you will lose a lot of momentum, which might be uh, really hard for you to get back into. So he's gonna try to creep this, no problemo. Gondor was able to creep this area completely, the goblins, the wargs. But there are some pikemen, and with them being around, it won't be an easy time for the Gondor, Gondor Knights to actually compete with the map control. That's the second Alvin Wood. And normally, when you play this matchup, you can place like maybe two uh, up to maximum three Alvin Woods before the Isengard player will get the chance to get their own TNT land from the spellbook. 
Because this Isengard doesn't need to go for industry, right? He's so rich that he can skip this and just go for the land now. And he will actually be able to cover the second Elven Wood, uh, which is impressive for the Isengard faction. However, I personally believe that industry is just too powerful. Even if you are rich, it will still give you a huge money advantage, you know? You get 100% more resources from the selected furnaces, and you can select three of them. So basically, you get 300% more eco for a short duration, which will help you to spam even more pikemen or to upgrade them way faster to get Saruman on the field to make war riders. We have so many stuff, so much stuff to do, you know? And industry is helping you to reach this milestone. Okay, he left the money on the ground for whatever reason. I think he could have taken it. Um, he's too generous, you know? What is this Lord doing? He's, he's out of his mind. The pikemen are also out of their mind. They are actually trying to fight against um, Cave Troll. <laughs> That's not possible. And uh, that hurts my ass. When somebody leaves treasure on the ground, I cannot stand it, you know? You gotta be careful, Lords. If you run into him, a level 1 Lords cannot 1v1 a troll, by the way. The troll is gonna smash you. The only way you can 1v1 him in a melee fight is when you have Carnage. When you are level 3 and you have Carnage. The trolls are just too strong in this game. Creeping in Battle for Middle of 1 is the most challenging thing out of all BFME games. So BFME 2 is way easier because you can legit creep everything with one pikeman. The same also goes to the uh, Rise of the Witch King. But Battle for Middle of 1 creeping is so challenging because I've seen in Rise of the Witch King people are able to creep a work layer with only one Orc Battalion, you know? That's never gonna happen in Battle for Middle of 1. That's why the creeping is so beneficial, it's so rewarding, because it's so hard, you know? And, I mean, obviously no problem for the upgraded pikemen with heavy armor and forge bleeds. And Gondor is gonna struggle very soon to keep the map control he has. He has not, already not enough, you know, or not too much. He's like four or five farms outside, but he's gonna lose them, trust me now. Like, you need fast Gandalf. What is he planning to do? Like, he's camping on the spot, and... Actually, he's still not a 3 power point. Isengard was able to deny him a lot. We have 3 Gondor Knights on the field. One of them is going to be sent back to the castle to recover. And 2 of them are here with the heavy armor plus forge blades. But no shields yet. So without shields, you cannot rush. Because you will have not enough armor against arrows. And these arrows, like he has full tower base as you can see. They will deal constant damage. And you might have to retreat. But very strong and very, you know, smart melee fight. That's what you can always do, right? Before the fight starts, you want to press S on your keyboard to make your Gondor Knight stop from moving. The last thing you want is them riding into the enemy pikemen. Because that's going to cause the revenge damage, which will cause you get one-shotted. Pretty much. That's why what you, what, you, what you can do is before the fight starts, you press S to stop your Gondor Knights. And in the melee fight, you can right-click on the enemy pikemen and fight them in the melee. So when you, then, when you don't trample them, they don't deal the bonus damage. I mean, pikes are still countering you, but we have seen in a situation like that, when you have like a highly level Gondor Knight against pikemen with no upgrades, you can win this 1v1 situation. Not against war chanted units, and also not upgraded units, but yeah, um, obviously war chant is a cooldown, and Isengard won't be able to upgrade every single pikeman on the field, because he will run out of money, as upgrades for the Isengard faction are quite expensive. Okay, the pikeman got sniped, and that's the first Elven, Elven Alliance special summon. I mean, it's not going to be used for the base rush, it's going to be used for the map control. The Elven wood will be covered, no problem, like I said. Uh, you know, Gondor player won't be able to use any Elven wood anymore without Isengard, uh, you know, covering it. Because Elven wood and Tainted Land have the same cooldowns. Okay, I mean, he's trying to rush, but as you can see, this pikemen, they are glowing, shining bright like a diamond. That is the three Gondor Knight rush. The micro is very important. You want to hit and run, but you don't want to lose any of your Gondor Knights. They are too valuable to be lost. But it's, you know, easier said than done. When there are so many uh, so many pikemen around, look, he has in total four pikemen in the castle. It's so hard for you to rush. In the meantime, though, he was able to recover a little bit from the map control. Uh, I'm lying. He, he, he didn't. He has only two farms inside the middle, in the middle of the map. But he's losing his own settlements next to the castle. So Isengard, what you can do in this matchup when you play Isengard against Gondor is you can queue up pikemen. So what you can do is you press shift button on your keyboard and then left click on the Isengard pikemen unit. So you can recruit five of them at the same time. What I'm trying to say is like spam them. Spam them all day, all night. Until you see soldiers, which is gonna be happening very soon. But then what you can do is you can counter that. It's a RTS game, rock, paper, scissor system. So... 
pikemen are being countered by swordmen, but swordmen are being countered by by your cavalry. In this case, your war riders. Perfect, perfect timing. Very smart move. The worker is looking around to spot. So Isengard actually has great amount of vision control. That's very important. What you can do with the workers besides harvesting trees is you can send them to different locations uh, locations on the map to spy the area. They are very cheap. They cost only 20 each in this patch. So you can easily afford to lose a couple of them for the sake of uh, spying the opponent and reacting way faster. So using the barracks now will give you a chance to get the war riders before the soldiers can get to your pikemen. And you can counter them before they get the chance to counter you. You understand? Very important. Him. And he even upgrades them. Uh, oh, the Isengard player needs to pay attention. He's paying attention. That's a very high skill level gameplay, by the way. Everybody is paying attention to every single location, which is definitely not easy. Like on a map like this, with like around 20 settlements in total, you need to constantly pay attention. And that's the downside of map control. When you have like 100% map control, you are the defender. So you, you don't have anything to conquer anymore, but you need to defend. Which means you need to pay attention constantly to every single location on the map. To not feed your pikemen because if you don't pay attention for a few seconds the soldier battalion can easily crash your pikemen in two seconds they deal crazy bonus damage to the to the pikemen maybe i can demonstrate you guys in a situation like this watch this i mean he's paying attention i can't even show you work riders they are crashing those soldiers no problemo soldiers they don't stand a chance but what you can do is you can kind of uh, get tower guards you know tower guards and soldiers you can kind of group them and then send them forward together Um, one tip from me, when you play this as Isengard against Gondor, you don't want to give Gondor too much time. So when you find yourself in this situation, what you can do is you can capture this outpost and start sieging the castle. That's gonna create immense of <laughs> that's gonna create immense amount of pressure. So you going for the siege works with a couple of pikemen, you don't even need archers, trust me on that one. You go for the rams for a couple of pikemen and you threaten his castle. He will have to come back and defend this. Because if he doesn't, you just take it over, you know? Six power points in the bank. He might go for the uh, field of fires. You don't need a uh, freezing rain against Gondor because he has zero leadership. He will have only Ganoff leadership, which is not worth to go for a rain. And now, boys, <laughs> that's 100% more money from the trees. With this many farms outside, Isengard will be so rich you can't even imagine. There is no Orcon for the second time. Lourdes is level only 2, but he will still be enough to cripple down his Ganoff. Uh, the money from Gondor is looking okay. He was also investing 800 into the Battle Tower, and he's around about 2000 away from getting his wizard upon the field. And Ganoff is, of course, the one solution to all your problems. And, and obviously, there is a Lourdes. You need to avoid Lourdes, which is not as hard as you eventually imagine, because Lourdes is not as mobile as Ganoff is. This map has like huge areas, so you have a huge area at the bottom, middle and top. So whenever you spot Lourdes, you want to be on the opposite side of the map, right? You see Lourdes bottom, you want to move to the top side. You see Lourdes moving up to you, you want to go back and go to the opposite side. So you pretty much play like cat and mouse with Lourdes, and when you are fast enough and you pay attention, when you can spot them every single time, you can avoid them eventually all game long. That's why, why I'm saying... The only way, the only win condition of Isengard is to pressure the enemy castle. And that really fast. Otherwise, this is going to happen. You will m have map control, but what's the matter if you can't snowball the lead into a quick victory? And Gondor will get fed over time, you know, get more power points collected, eventually get the eagle summon unlocked, use the eagles to crash your lords, and then fish power points. That's going to happen if you can't finish them off. Okay, now we have even very highly leveled Gundam Knights. Isengard didn't capture any outpost yet, which is a huge mistake. Huge mistake. Because you have such a great setup, you know, you just put one pikeman to the outpost, and the outpost should be always safe. Not only you will get more money, but you also get more vision control. So it's a win-win situation. And you lose the little you lose little to nothing. And um, money is looking good. I mean he might go for Saruman, I believe, at this point. Yeah, he's going for Saruman. I'm actually wondering if he was ever purchasing the fire arrows. We're gonna find out very soon. Um, Gondor is reclaiming the map control, even without Gandalf. The second Gandalf is on the field, it's gonna be way easier to do that. 
And then Isengard has to pay double attention to not lose the Pikeman to the Gandalf. Yeah, he has Fire Up Purchase. He has both the, you know, the only two heroes from Isengard, Lourdes and Saruman. Lourdes is only level almost three, but level five is going to be a huge power spike for the fighting Urukai, as he will unlock more damage leadership to the nearby allied units and eventually going to make them one shot Eagles. That's your point, right? When you when the game lasts a long time, it's going to eventually happen that you will have to deal with Eagles. And the only goal from the Eagle Summon from the Gondor player will be to kill your Lords. That's the only premise of them. But if you have Lourdes level 5 with Warchan combination, you have 110% more DPS on your um, you know, combos. And then you can eventually kill the Eagles before they can finish off your Lords. If this is gonna happen, the Eagles, if you can defend the Eagles without losing your Lords, it's a huge cooldown window because Eagles have like 5 minutes cooldown, right? And you need to play around there. You need to punish your opponent for making mistakes by playing around the cooldowns of his special summons. Beautiful lightning swords, but war riders have like crazy amount of durability, you know, and when you use them uh, This formation the line formation you get even more tanky They have also very unique formations. That's the only formation in the game which grants you additional experience and armor But you lose 50% of your damage And these battle formations are more important than you might think because in many situations when you are trying to get away and there is a skill shot gonna hit you eventually, you can always just play around the battle formations and get more tanky when you have to and get more damage when you can. Saruman level 5, 3 pikemen combo, uh, not the best combination in the world, I don't like them. In this version of the patch, uh, they are slower than the Uruk crossbowman combination, that's the first thing. The f second thing is, they have less bonuses in compared to Uruk crossbowman combo. And the third thing is, they are, they are very bad against anything but horses. And they are only good against horses if the horses are riding into them, you understand? So, what you can do instead is you, you make like 2-3 normal combos with Uruk crossbowmen, and then you just put like 1-2 pikemen in porcupine formation in between the combos. This is for people who are lazy. If you don't want to be lazy, you will win more games, but then you need to micro a bit more. <laughs> I hope this makes sense for you guys. Okay. Ganav is of course fishing power points, like I said, be always on the opposite side of the map, that's very important. And finally, there comes the move from Isengard, double siege coming up in the furnace. Also capture this outpost, and even this outpost. You can capture legit every single outpost in the game. In the meantime, and that's the goal of the Gondor player, he is trying to fish power points, because his only bet, his only premise to ever defend this is either having lots of trebuchet on top of the wall or inside the base, or you want to have eagle special summon available. Gondor has not that much money. So if Isengard is going to be fast, um, he might be able to get in there before Gondor will get the chance to capture or recruit um, multiple trebuchet. The base rush is going to happen. He knows Lourdes is not on the spot. The war pit is going to be taken down. War chant into the trample from the war riders. They, have used, they are using the whole ability. This way they have more DPS. But there is Gandalf. And there are constant damage from the Alvin warriors. And Isengard has to retreat. But I think that's still a great situation for Isengard. Just keep fighting around your own base. Because level 3 furnaces are gonna shoot, deal constant damage. He's demolishing them way too fast. You don't need to demolish resource buildings because they don't give too many power points. What you need to demolish, however, is your uh, battle towers, your sentry towers. Losing the Uruk pit is a big mistake, by the way. It's a huge mistake that hurts. Because that means no more pikemen anytime soon. Which will, again, punish your opponent and play around the damage you have dealt to him. So he knows now, okay, Uruk pit is gone. That means Isengard won't be able to recruit any more pikemen anytime soon. It will take you, it will take him at bare minimum one more minute, which is a long time in RTS games, especially in Battle for Middle Earth 1. So what you can do is punish him. Whenever he's going out with the pikemen he has for the map control, you can go inside the base. Whenever he's in the base, you can use your horses to get full map control. Even though Isengard doesn't seem to struggle with money, but trust me on that one, you know, if you lose the, all this army uh, and Lourdes and Saruman, this money will be gone in a few seconds. Okay, so, he's wasting a little bit too much time in my, in my opinion. You know, you want to be fast. He should have sieged him like 10 minutes ago, I'm telling you guys. He could have, he could have. He was strong enough to do that, trust me. You don't have to go for Saruman, you could have just... Another base rush, and yeah, Lourdes is not moving, Lourdes is not moving, he's just kinda in a, like a statue next to the units, and look at this, they can do this all day, you know? We've 
We expanded the siege work. Oh, that's gonna be painful. Losing those level 3 furnaces. Oh, the Uruk pit has been taken down again. He needs to build the Uruk pit maybe at the outpost. He is losing the full top side and a chunk of his base. And Isengard still doesn't siege. He's finally making a move. As long as this is not sieged is until now, the gunner player is free to do whatever he wants to. I mean, the base is not gonna fall, but Gondor will be able to hit and run. Here's an outpost next to the castle, so you can always go back to the well, recover a little bit, and do this over and over again until you threaten his base. You have even Tower Guard on the field <laughs> to counter the trebuchet. Guys, did you know, like in the very first few, few versions of the game, you could actually combine Tower Guards with your trebuchet. This combination is still in the game. However, I believe EA Games kind of removed it because it's kind of too busted, you understand? Like, you having Tower Guards as a protection in front of your trebuchet? How crazy is that? They are combined. You, you could right click your trebuchet and your tower guard into your trebuchet. And they would move in this formation around the trebuchet and protecting it pretty much against any cavalry, you know? Which would make the Gondor Rohan matchups even more <laughs> sufferable for the Rohan player. Okay, so it looks like Gondor wants to defend himself. And after the after the couple of rushes and the amount of damage dealt to Isengard Bees, he has almost the power points for the Eagle Summon. He's very close. He's there now. He has 6 power points. And that's the situation we will be finding ourselves in now. We have 3 combos, but no Lord's leadership. So the question is, can Isengard deal with the Eagles before they kill Lords? That's the main question. I mean, you can use Fireball too. Oh, he wanna go for the, for the bomb. Oh, is he gonna... Boom, son, nice. I like this one. Very smart move from Gondor, making sure to cut the production from behind, destroying the siege works. But I think it's not gonna matter that much because I don't think you will repair all of that anytime soon. It's like 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000 if you want to repair this and you are below 1,000. So the Gondor base will be eventually open for the, for, the, for the entire game. I don't think he will be able to defend this. Look at the money from Isengard. Even though he lost a great chunk of his map control, he is still up over 20,000, you know? Okay. Big commitment, uh, tower guards not in formation. What is Gondor planning to do? He is looking for an opening, for a, for a potential. There comes the Eagle Summon boys, and their only goal is to kill Lords, trust me. So Gandalf is peeling back until Lords is gonna go down. Fireball, and you see, he could, they, they didn't focus them for whatever reason, you know? He, I think he could have killed them, but Lords is dead now. Lords is dead now, the horses are taking way too much damage by trampling into the pikemen. There comes Sarma, uh, not Sarma, that's L Genov. <laughs> okay. Oh, 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 heal. Okay, I thought heal is gonna be on cooldown. Beautiful. Look, Genov is popping off and that's your goal, ladies and gentlemen. That's what, oh my goodness, in the meantime, the Gondor castle is falling apart. What if, can he finish it? I think he can finish it. Finish it. Yeah, he finished it! And Gondor Castle is goners, but there is Gandalf on the field. Is he gonna give up? He has still two outposts under his control. That's the reason why he's not defeated. But losing the castle, holy guacamole, that's gonna be a painful experience. Because how you want to recover from this? I don't know. 14 power points in the, base from, in the bank from the Isengard. He's only 6 power points away from his Balrog Special Summon, which will be enough to one-shot these two outposts. No problemo. You can do this. And Gondor is up to 6 power points after the massive battle in his castle. And even though he won the battle, he won the fight, but he lost the castle. <laughs> I don't know if we can call it as a victory when you lost your castle during that. I think Isengard did the best thing, you know, like the best thing out of the war situation. And he lost all his army, including his combos and Saruman and Lourdes. But he was able to trade that for the base. And the money sustain is very important. Yeah, Gondor has actually run about 4k in the bank. So he might be very soon able to recapture this. Actually, when I think about it, it's not even a bad thing to lose the castle if you can rebuy it. Because, you know, you remember he was able to break like, what, 8 parts of the wall? And repairing this broken parts of the wall would be more expensive than buying a new castle. Let's be real here. So maybe it's better. You know, <laughs> maybe it's all planned. I don't know. I don't know. But it's a great game, dude. I enjoy this one so far. So he's trying to revive his Saruman and Lourdes. Lourdes already back on the menu. The outpost is going to be found and taken down. Urukpit, finally level 3. Uh, again, losing the Urukpit was a big mistake and big oof. You know, you don't want to do this. And Isengard is rotating now. There is Lourdes and the thing, look, there is something called sharing experience, passive leveling up. 
And the way you want to achieve that is you want to put your heroes in your combos, in your archers. And as they shoot something, you can stay in them. And even if you don't get the last hit, you can share experience and level up this way. That's what the Isengard play has to do with Lords. Like, you don't understand how important the additional damage leadership is going to be to one-shot the Eagles, to one-shot even Gandalf, and to become tanky enough. Because the more levels you have, the more tanky you will get. So you can absorb more damage, you can deal more damage, you have more abilities to be unlocked. So all that great stuff. But uh, Gondor is cleaning the bottom side. So he was able to destroy this outpost before, and now this outpost too. And he has still plenty of farms outside. This one is level 3, very important. He was just able to recapture the castle, by the way. And the outpost here has been taken down. So, I believe Isengard has no information that the, that the castle has been recaptured. That means he gotta siege yet one more time. He needs to siege because this castle is unbreached, right? It's like fresh, fresh from the market. <laughs> now he's able to see it. He's like, oof, that's gonna be a tilting situation, you know? Uh, you know, <laughs> I cannot imagine myself in the shoes of the Isengard player. He played great. He's playing great. Don't get me wrong, but I think he's making some major rookie mistakes, which could be easily avoided to dominate this game way before this could ever. I, I think Isengard could have won this game before Gandalf even could get recruited. I mean, if you watch my channel now for a long time, you see when I play Isengard, I'm going ham. You understand? I'm not giving any time for the for the Gondor player to build up. Like, of course, some games are extending for a long duration. They're gonna last a while. But whenever I can, whenever I have a lead, and this guy had a huge lead, then you can close off the game way faster. Okay, so he's struggling money-wise, like he has almost no money, he cannot even fill up the base anytime soon. Uh, he has the last outpost destroyed, the level 3 farm that's gonna hurt, speechcraft to level up those units, great. Uh, Ganov is lurking around the map, getting experience left and right, level 9, ladies and gentlemen, for the White Wizard of the Gondor faction. Let's see. If you got what it takes to turn this game single-handedly around. Level 10, Knight Battalion. Level 10, two of them. They are uh, as strong as you potentially can get them. Uh, 17 power points almost and 8 power points almost for the Gondor. So Gondor is 2 power points away, Isengard is 3 power points away. Now Siege, yeah. But I think what you, what you need to do is you gotta make like two armies, you understand? You wanna... Look, when you focus on one thing and you lose the other thing, it's not worth it. Because 1 plus 1 minus 1 is still 1. So what you want to do is you want to keep what you have and conquer with another army the other side. And I think that's the mistake Isengard has been doing pretty much all game long. He was He's like having all his forces in one single location, but Gondor can completely ignore this until his base is being sieged. So, and again, he's playing it very smart. Even I mean, Gondor is playing flawless, flawlessly. I, I can't even pronounce it, but what I'm trying to say is like on a map like this, in any big map really, evil factions have a huge advantage over the Gondor faction, more than even more, in a map like Westworld with plenty of settlements, which, which means you have like so much money, you have so many possibilities. In Lumber Mills, they are able to give you more resources in compared to farms, so evil factions most of the time, like 99% of the time, will have more resources than the good factions. And uh, especially Mordor is scaling with the resources so much that Gondor will have a, you know, less chance of winning Mordor in a map like Westfold than he's gonna have in the map Forts of Eisen, for example. The bigger, the bigger the map, the better it is for the evil faction. The only exception to this rule is Rohan, because Rohan is crazy with big maps too, because you have the early game presence with the additional uh, farmers, you know, the, the, the peasants from the farms. Now you can build a farm, recruit additional peasant, and you can have like 20 peasants at the same time moving around the map, and nobody can contest this. I mean, he has a full base with farms and one blacksmith. <laughs> Eagles have been special summoned, but they are far away from the lords. So let's see, there are now 4 combos, and Saruman has fireball ability available. The Eagles, they should try to get to lords, but I think it's easier said than done. I think what the Gondor player is trying to do now, is you want to get the power point. He needs one power point for the for the EOD. And getting experience is very important. So Gandalf and his Gondor Knights are trying their best to get as many power points as they potentially can. And I think the Eagles should do the same. Don't bother to try to kill the Citadel. You should just try to kill as many pikemen as you can. Oh, he's looking for opportunity. Boom! And Gandalf is doing it, boys. Not only does he have now the uh, you know EOD, the Army of the Red, which will be enough to defend this single-handedly, yeah, perfect timing. You see, decision making. 
He knows he can't protect this with, with what he got. Gandalf can't approach this army because there is lords. And when you can't kill lords, your Gandalf is pointless. And this player pays attention. He will cripple you before you will get the chance to visa blast them. So he knows the only win condition he got. And the only chance to defend this is getting EOD. So he's making the perfect call to go for the peace, get the power points he needs, and use EOD. But little he knows, uh, losing units, <laughs> and especially your heroes, will grant Isengard so many power points that he now has the Baldrog Special Summon available. And Gondor is trying to repair this. Actually, Gondor has crazy amount of money. I didn't expect that. It's 4k. Just cancel it. And you can rebuy this once again. Because the Balrog is going to destroy this camp. This castle. I think. I mean, here's an outpost at the bottom. and Bottom right and bottom left. So he won't be defeated. Even if he loses the castle. And he should cancel this. If he doesn't, it's going to be a huge mistake if he doesn't cancel them. It's 4,000 if you cancel them. Cancel it. Oh, he should have cancelled it. Really, really, man. Maybe he's hoping that the Balrog is not going to be able to finish it, but he should definitely cancel it. He will lose 4k for no reason. Cancel it. What is the Balrog doing? Ah, he's going to cancel it. Smart. You see, 4k. Dude, you would handicap yourself so much if you wouldn't cancel this. And the outpost is going to be taken down. In the meantime, there is no rotation from Isengard. He's playing very sloppy. He was playing a perfect game at the beginning of the game until like 10 minutes ago. The castle has been destroyed twice, but it's going to be recaptured twice too, because Gondor has the money to do that. And Isengard, even if he would capture this, he has like zero protection. That's why, why, you, why you need pikemen everywhere, you understand? Like what you want to do is you want to queue up pikemen. Stop making crossbowmen. The only reason why you would ever need crossbowmen is to deal with eagles. That's their only purpose, but eagles are on cooldown. So what you want to do is you want to spam pikemen. So, guys, there is a point in in, uh, in, in a game in which you in, in which you need to realize, okay? My opponent has EOD. He can't get any stronger, you understand? He cannot become stronger. So I cannot feed him even more. So I don't mind about losing units as long as I can deny him map control. So that's the time when you can build a second Uruk pit. Look his money. He has nearly 40,000 in the bank. 40,000! Like, he can build and sustain 5 Uruk pits in total. And queue up pikemen all the time. And send them to, with the G button, you know, to guard this area, this area, this area, to every single of the settlements in the entire game. You can send them literally everywhere. And if they die, who cares? You do that again. And you will eventually win this way. Because your eco advantage doesn't matter anything if you don't utilize it. If you don't use it. You understand? That's very important to be understood money advantage doesn't matter if you don't use the money effectively like the 40,000 is not worth more than the 2,000 condor has in the castle that's what I'm trying to say and Saruman level 6 uh, Lourdes is at the bottom side and where is Ganav at? Ganav is at the outpost so he's level 10 now has the war of power ability available and EOD will be a little bit sooner available in compared to Balrog so EOD and Balrog they have both the same cooldown but, remember, EOD was used a little bit before. So, it will be around about 20 to 30 seconds available before the Balrog is going to be ready. And no archers here. It means no protection for the Lords. He's going to be, unfortunately, once again, taken down. And we have a battle of the wizards. Yeah. <laughs> Why should I welcome you, Gandalf Grey? You have no power here, and then he's like putting. Oh, I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Gandalf, dude. Look at him. He's looking like an angel, dude. Okay, the eagles are doing a phenomenal job defending and getting map control, but it's okay. You know, that's that's fine. Eagles once again have a long cooldown. You can easily revive your lords once again in your Saruman and just keep spamming pikemen. Now stop making combos because your combos don't mean anything. You don't need combos for anything else but eagles. There is literally nothing else you can ever do with the combos. They are too slow, too sloppy, and your pikemen are way faster, and they are countering legit everything, including Gandalf. So Gandalf mounted will take so much damage from the pikemen. You, what you need to do is deny him. Deny him money, deny him farm, deny him money, deny him farm. Because what you want to achieve is when you move finally to the castle of Gondor, you want to make sure that this is the last remaining camp or castle or outpost that keeps the opponent alive. And you destroying the castle will make you win the game. He destroyed the castle twice, but never 
a single time, he made sure that this is the last thing that keeps him alive. So what you want to do is you want to rotate at the same time. When you know you have Baldrog, for example, you want to rotate to the bottom with war riders, you want to rotate to the top with pikes or combos, you want to attack them simultaneously. The outpost, and then you summon the Baldrog and try to go for the victory. Because if you won't do that, it's going to be like a, you know, like a deja vu situation. It's going to happen over and over again. And you will find yourself in a loop, pretty much, in which you can't escape. And eventually you will get triggered, you will get exhausted, you will get tilted, and you might just lose the game. Okay, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I mean, he's level 10, he can't get any strong either. So, you have money. And that's the one thing I don't understand about players, for example, even a very good player. Like, this Isengard player is a very strong player, right? He's um, a super strong player. He knows that. Like, he has 35,000, but he's never going for the second Uruk pit, not the third Uruk pit, not the second War pit. He should, though. Okay? So, now we have, like, this awkward situation, <laughs> because what's gonna happen, what can happen is... Oh, he's using EOD at the bottom side. Okay. I was expecting that he use, is going to use EOD to defend against Baldrog. But that's not going to be the key. So he's going to use EOD to kill the army. Ganav got crippled. So he wanted to save Ganav. I don't think it was needed, to be honest with you. I think Ganav could have been able to war of power them. The, the EOD would have been a much better usage to defend against Baldrog. These two battalions are not going to kill him, right? He's too tanky for them. And by the way, if you don't even do anything, if you just move with Ganav, you can kill EOD while ignited. You just deal so much damage to them. You see? Look, they are taking so much damage from the, you know, presence. Oh, but he's looking for a counterattack. But the EOD is gone now. It's a very durable and tanky base. So there are like multiple level 3 furnaces. It's going to be so hard for Gondos to destroy this, trust me. And Balrog once again will be able to finish off the base. And Gondor might, might once again be able to capture it. As easy as that, you know. Too many war riders, but every single one of them are, is on one location. It's a mistake. You want to split them up a little bit and send them to this location, to this location, because Gondor is once again reclaiming so much map control, which will once again <laughs> give him enough money very soon to recapture the base, the castle for the third time. And he's gonna look. I think that's trying to buy this, but l let's be real. Even if he buys that somehow, how are you planning to defend this? You can't. Uh, Lourdes gonna be revived, Saruman is recovering up a little bit over time, he's almost level 7, doesn't really matter anything because he has no levels. Saruman is one of the, if not the only hero in the game that comes on the field with all the abilities unlocked. So he's joining with level 5, and with level 5 he has legit everything available. And, I mean of course with levels he will get more HP, a bit more melee damage, but at the end of the day uh, he won't have any new abilities to be unlocked. Okay, he's going for the devastation, <laughs> even more money making tools, and yet, yet again he's not utilizing the money. So I would just buy the out outpost and make three Uruk pits here by the way. Just three Uruk pits and spam. Okay, he's making more units now, war riders. But the base has been recaptured for the third time, boys. Where is Ganna when we need them? He's around this side. He has not used the war of power once one single time yet. And the problem is I don't see Isengard being able to siege the base anytime soon, right? Let's be real, that's not gonna happen anytime soon. So, um, he will need map control for this. He will need this outpost or this outpost for that. The Eagles, they have just killed all the war riders, and that's why playing a extra long game against Gondor is so exhausting, because if you don't finish him off, it's gonna be a rotation of the power points all the time. So he will be able to use AOD, Eagles, Rohirrim, Elves, AOD, Eagles, Rohirrim, Elves, in rotation every few minutes, and whenever you want to move out, they will be there to crush your army. So that's why you want to push the win, not push the damage. He's even Cloud Break now for the stun. I mean, stun is useless in 1.06, because when they are level 2, they are legit immune to it, so a 7 power point would be absolutely useless. But luckily in the patch 2.2 we fixed it. Oh! Still not level 5, that's the problem. That's the problem! Oh! Close, close, but not close enough. He even used the land to deny them uh, leadership, but the eagle could get, couldn't get the last it off. So Lourdes was able to survive. What's the plan now? Do you see the rotation from the top 
and now the Isengard is going to the bottom. And now Isengard can capture this, try to siege the bees before the next summon of the Balrog, and force the opponent player once again to use EOT on the on the army. Gondor is rotating for a big rush, and again, there is a water power ability available for Ganov, so you can definitely use it. Ganov has not been killed all game long, by the way. I mean, quick note. Boom, sun on your face. Let's go. For the first time, we see the water power in action. And also, it damages the buildings, by the way. Not too much, but it still chunks them a little bit. Okay, the outpost here is going to be definitely taken down. So he's fully committing now on destroying the castle of Isengard, which is gonna take a while. That means Isengard will have the chance to rotate. Beautiful fireball, dude. The wizards of this game are popping off. A full battalion has been killed. And the base is gonna be safe. Here's a stable after a long time. I mean, all the money Gondor had so far in, the, in this game. Like, he had to... Can you imagine? He invested 15,000 just to buy the castle three times. 15,000 all alone for the for the capturing <laughs> of, the, of his own castle. As he lost it to, to die twice. Or three times he lost him, right? I think he lost it three times, yeah. He lost once against War Riders and twice against Balrog. Okay, there comes the War of Power. Uh, the EOD, I mean. To kill the army. Lourdes. And Saruman has been killed once again. The Elves. <laughs> it has to be annoying, am I right or not? It has to be least annoying to play against that. It's all, all because he's not trying to finish him off. I mean, he's trying to. Don't get me wrong. It's not like he's not he's not willingly trying to lose this game, obviously. But he's not trying hard enough. Oh, that might be the end of this castle. If Gondor has any more units on the field. I mean, he has one Gondor Knight here. And that's it, right? I mean, he has also one here. Okay, one here with Gandalf. One Gondor Knight in Gandalf. Is this going to be enough to finish off the bees? I don't know. I mean, Isengard has still money, right? So he can easily reveal this. He's going to do this. They're going to commit now on the Citadel. It's a level 10 unit. And Easter Light is chunking buildings too. It's going to be destroyed. It means the buildings are not going to rebuild. But even now, he can just keep rebuilding this. No problem for him. 700 resources for Isengard is not a big deal. Because he has over 30,000. In the meantime, the castle has been destroyed for the fourth time. <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it, it's feeling like a loop situation. But Isengard should just buy it now, no? He should just buy it. Send one of the workers to this location and buy it. Because Gondor has no units. That's the problem. He just lost his stable. He has only one single Gondor Knight on the field. And this Gondor Knight cannot... He has second one also. But I don't know what, why Isengard is not trying to buy this. Gondor can't buy it yet. He has almost 4k, but he is not there yet. And these two outposts are the last two outposts he has on the field. So he's sending the worker forward. Is he gonna do that? Gondor has no information about that. Let's focus on the map, on the on the vision from Gondor. He's not having information. He doesn't know that this out, this camp has been, or this castle has been just captured. The war riders couldn't be able to finish this off. They're gonna be chunked by the lightning sword, but it's okay. Gondor has still no information, and very smart move from Isengard, building all the towers first. Just stole time. That's all you gotta do. You don't have to defend it for eternity, but you need to just defend it long enough for you to capture and crush those two camps. Eagles are gonna be special summoned. They're gonna be try. Uh, they're gonna be used to kill the cit citadel. It's a cr freaking exciting game, by the way. The towers, most of them are gonna make it up, but level one furnace are of course not tanky enough. So he needs army, but he has not even a Uruk pit on the field. It's a very awkward situation. I don't know what's gonna happen next. I have no clue who's gonna win this, but I think it's gonna be a crazy shenanigan fiesta. He has a Uruk pit here and a Vork pit. What a game, dude! Actually a crazy game guys. What do you think about this game? Please let me know in the comment section down below. And if you are down there, also make sure to leave a like on this video. And also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I think the castle is going to be destroyed. Uh, Gondor has still not the money for that. To buy it though. I mean Isengard can, could just rebuild this all the time just to be annoying. Rebuild, 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 rebuild all the time. I mean you can do it only 20 times. <laughs> because it's going to cost you almost a thousand to do this. And the problem... There is a problem nobody is talking about. <laughs> in the late, 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 late game, your lumber mills are going to be kind of in, in a bad spot. Because the way they are working is they need trees around them to make money for you. Look at the situation here. <laughs> there are no trees nearby. Oh, he's stunning the lumber mill workers. That's all the cloud break is good for in the patch 1.06. Um, they are going to work in Africa. 
while living in Europe or something, you know? That's gonna be a very awkward situation and eventually trees are not infinite. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna eventually die, right? I mean, they're gonna be harvested and then you have no more resources from the, from the lumber mills. It means your devastation is gonna be useless and your field of fires is gonna be useless. But it's not gonna happen anytime soon, especially not on a map like Westfold. Westfold has like plenty of trees, so it's gonna still go on like that for the next, I would say, 20 minutes, but then we will have a problem. Does Gondor have money? He has almost the money. I don't know, man. This game is kind of kind of crazy. Because he has War of Power, um, War of Power, right? And also, it would be almost unbeatable. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Be careful, Ganov. It's not worth it. He has almost EOD. It means the Balrog is going to be available. So, the awkward situation here is, even if Gondor captures and buys this castle, it will be destroyed once again from the Balrog. <laughs> But the problem is, if you don't buy it, then Balrog can be used to kill your two outposts at the top side, and then you lose anyway. So, what is the solution to this problem? I have no clue. Maybe try to kill Balrog with Ganov? Cripple him. Oh, he can't. Can't touch this. He did it. Did, did, did. Oh, the AOD so busted. I would cripple him now, and then use Balrog just to kill him. <laughs> I would, that's what I would look to because this Gandalf has to be has to be annoying for Isengard. He has not lost him a single time all game long, by the way. Very impressive. The castle has been bought once again from Isengard. So the thing is, Gondor has now this outpost at the bottom, and also he's gonna have this one at the bottom left side. However, the EOD is gonna be gone very soon. It's a level three Uruk, but it's gonna be quite tanky. So Isengard knows that all he gotta do is destroy this because he's gonna summon EOD, the Balrog at the outpost. Okay, never mind. So, he will... A Balrog is enough, he has time, because he can fly, he has like no cooldown, he can keep flying all the time, right? So he can... Oh, but there are archers, he can recapture this too. I don't know, man, it's a very, very interesting situation, I need to see. Okay, Gondor is trying to destroy this outpost. Oh, what is this game, dude? I have no... I have, I have, what? That's crazy game. Okay, he killed the archers too, with the war guiders, they won't be able to recapture this, right? Okay, money from Gondor is not looking too good. He has, I mean, he has 4k, but he has not enough money to recapture the castle, even if he destroys it. Now we have a double castle situation for Isengard, against only one outpost for Gondor, because this one has been taken down. It's the last remaining outpost on the field, and he's about to lose it. I mean, he will have enough money to capture this one very soon. What is this game? Okay. There is one archer level 4. <laughs> he will be left alive. Gondor has also not many farms outside. I mean, he has still like 3, 4, but that's not enough, of course. He was even able to save this outpost. A double outpost for Gondor versus double outpost for Isengard and double castle for Isengard. And almost 80% map control. 2,700 resources versus... Oh, you see? That's what I'm talking about, boys. He's now all of a sudden poor. Can you imagine the person who had like 30,000 in the bank a few minutes ago is now down to 4,000? I mean, it's still a great amount of money, but imagine, he was over almost 40,000 at some point. But it's okay. Because with the double castle, he will have money no problemo. The eagles are coming, boys. They're gonna be defended. I mean, it's all put. The, the rotation of the power points is kinda nuts, you know. I'm not gonna lie. The rotation of the power points is kinda annoying to play against, I need to say. Okay, now you need to defend. You have conquered enough, you need to defend. And you need to stall. You don't want to lose the outpost and then trade it. You understand? You don't want to take down this one, but you lose this one in the meantime. That's not the way you want to win this. Again, 1 plus 1 minus 1 is still 1. So you want to defend and conquer at the same time. And 1, 2 pikemen are going to be enough to do this. Let's see if no command points. Yeah, he has kind of on low on command points, but he has idle units. Units which are chilling and doing nothing. We have four, 5 war riders chilling, 3 pikemen chilling. They don't make a move. Oh, Gondor needs to pay attention to this level 9, okay. He's gonna summon the Rohirrim, but what are they gonna do? <laughs> oh, there is Gandalf. Oh, 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 Cripple him, dude! No, Starcrest, cripple him! Okay, he crippled him, but <laughs> he lost all the army. Fireball him, like in the films, but he couldn't shield bubble it this time. Does he have heal? Hold on a second. Hold on a sec. He has, he has heal. Okay, he stole the Rohirrim and made them fight against Gandalf. 
what a fiesta is happening here by the way Gandalf is like enough of this you know he's writing it down I don't care about lords I will just write it down and use my water power to crush them in, in, in front of their feet it's exactly what happened boys but water power is on cooldown now it's kind of funny though because there's some into units from the spell book and <laughs> Saruman was able to steal them lords has been taken down but it's okay um, outpost captured by Gondor the, ca the castle is still remaining on the field and the problem is once those level uh, level 1 furnaces are going to be level 2 or level 3 they're going to be way too tanky to be destroyed by only 2-3 Gondor knights and that's the problem with the Gondor player because he has only 42 out of 200 available command points under his control that's the problem and that means he has only 2 Gondor knights that's it that's all he got because keep in mind that Gandalf also cost you 10 command points in the patch 1.06 we made it in the patch 2.2 that Heroes are not gonna cost any more command points, but in this version they do cost command points. So two Gondonites and Gandalf against the world. That's the, that's the economy advantage, boys. Uh, up to 11,000. He's gonna use AOD to defend this. And Baldrock is gonna be available soon. So the, the question now is, hold on, he lost the, oh, he lost one of the two Gondonites here on the field. He lost one of the two Gondor Knights he had just on the field. Now he's down to one command, one Gondor Knight and Gandalf. That's all the army from Gondor. All of that. Holy Kakamoli. I mean, here's the outpost, but I think this outpost is going to be destroyed. There is Gandalf coming, uh, trying to defend this, but I think you can just, you know, ignore that. Because Balrog is going to be summoned now at the bottom outpost. So, the Valrog can one-shot this. One Breath Fire is enough to destroy all the three buildings, including the Citadel in the middle. Boom. Okay. Now just fly. He captured this one. So, but no problem. Valrog can still finish this off, right? It's not a problem. And all you gotta do is destroy this. And that's it. That's it. Now is the time for the Isengard play to shine. Now you wanna rotate. Lourdes is finally level 5. EOD is on cooldown. Eagles are on cooldown. That's two major cooldowns for the Gondor. With War of Power being the third one so three major abilities which can eventually turn the tide of the battle are on cooldown currently and that's the time for you to rotate and uh, because the balrog has done his job he can't do much more the distance between this outpost and this outpost is too much so you can you cannot fly this location you need to walk until here for example to fly but what you can do is you can fly here fly here fly here but it will take you like three flies which is a lot of time and you don't have that much time with balrog okay so, <laughs> we have three outposts and two camps versus one outpost. Yep, if Gondor can win this, I will go 24, stre 24 hours stream on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. I will stream for 24 hours if Gondor can turn this. And in order to see my promise, you know, I'm, I'm being honest, you can follow me on my Twitch channel, which you can find the link for in the description down below, and I would love to meet you in the upcoming live stream, guys. For everybody who is watching from YouTube, I would really appreciate it. Okay, now the game slowed down a little bit. Let's be real, Gondor has not many tools. So my promise is kind of empty, because, <laughs> because I don't think he can turn this game around. But, dude, I have seen crazy... Um, you see, that's what I'm talking about. You see damage leadership from Lourdes and Warchan. Now it's the friend story. Oof! Nostacres! Don't hurt, but you can't kill. Uh-oh, he's gonna easter him. Yeah, Lourdes is dead, but can he go finish off the Gandalf somehow? I don't know. Because everything is getting summoned. We have Eagles, Cloudbreak, War of Power... Rohirrim, Elvinwood, Tainted Land in one location and Gandalf is gonna be saved. Dude, Gandalf is the MVP. Now he's trying to fully commit on the outpost. He doesn't care about Gandalf. He wanna finish off the game. He knows that's the only bad and the only chance because otherwise it's gonna be a never-ending story and the full commitment with the War Guiders but they are getting blown up by the Lightning Sword from Gandalf. As the game goes to an end, I'm also at my end, at my limits by the way. I didn't know man, this game is kinda crazy. Like, I have not seen games like this many times. Like, destroying the castle 3-4 times, rebuying it, fighting until the very end. And, you know, especially Gandalf Micro from this person was impressive. Like, he kept him 
throughout the entire game alive. He never lost them one single time. Ganov has eventually killed all alone like 2000 units. We have numbers of the kill ratio from this wizard kind of competing with the numbers of the campaign. So if you play a campaign full from good campaign from the beginning Mori until the end Black Gate, you might have gotten this many numbers like this player got in one single game against Isengard. But Gandalf all alone cannot win you the game. The mistakes and especially the equal advantage from Isengard could give him the edge in this battle and eventually give him the sustain in his economy to keep producing units even after losing. And trust me, when we could get the chance to take a look into the battle statistics at the end of the game, which we unfortunately can't because that's a replay and you can't do this in replays, but if we could, I can guarantee you that Gondor player has eventually killed 5, maybe 10 times more units in compared to Isengard player. Easily. It's not gonna be even close. You understand? <laughs> That's gonna be kinda crazy. Anyways, so we have Lourdes back in the business. EOD is gonna be available, which will mean that Gondor will once again be able to defend himself. But the problem is gonna be that Balrog is gonna be summoned right after. And Gondor is still sitting on only one single outpost and Balrog, there's no problem for Balrog, he will just be able to finish it off, no problemo. So, the game winning point is gonna be Balrog, no matter what happens. I mean, the only way is if Gondor can destroy this outpost and buy it. But even then, Balrog can fly, right? So you wanna take down this outpost eventually. But it's easier said than done because, as you can see, the only singular unit this Gondor player has on the field is Gandalf. That's all he got. He lost all the Gondor Knights. He has only one single unit. These are the 10 command points. That's the dude. That's the dude. You see his face? You see how serious he's looking like? He's looking for Peregrine Took. I wish he would just recruit Peregrine Took. Oh, there comes the Balrog of Morgoth. Into the Lightning Sword, into the EOD. And Balrog cannot play the game. I'm a servant of the Secret Fire, wielder of the Flame of Arnor. Dark Fire will not avail you, Flame of Odun. Dude, you shall not pass. Let's go. Let's go. Gandalf, my man. How can you not fall in love with this white, beautiful, juicy looking wizard? And he is looking for a chance, for opportunity, no secrets on your face. The entire army just surrender. I, I think Isengard should just go on his knees and sur surrender to this master of Gandalf. I don't care who's gonna win this game, but Gandalf is the victorious person, victorious hero. He's the MVP, the good, the legend. He is the one. The one, boys. And look at this, man. Like two army destroying abilities. And if he, dude, when you think about it, he can do this all day, right? Um, so but he used the EOD at the same time, like Balrog. So what he can do is he can use the Lightning Sword and EOD combination every single time to counter the Balrog. That's legit possible. So Balrog will be defeated before he can play the game. But he's gonna leave the game now. <laughs> he's like, I'm done. Okay, maybe the game is war was over because he used the War of Power. He had Eagles on cooldown, EOD on cooldown, Rohirrim on cooldown, and the next attack. What can he do <laughs> with zero units in Gandalf? But GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was it was really enjoyable for me to cast this. I had really fun. Hopefully you guys also had fun watching this. If you, if you, you know, question is what was your most favorite moment in this game? Mine was when the Balrog was special summoned. And then we have seen Lightning Sword and AOD combination to just insta kill him, spawn kill him. That was my favorite moment. But I'm curious about yours. Please let me know in the comment section down below. I, I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck as always. Stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.